hello students welcome back to your science class so students in the previous class we were talking about that of the so we were talking about uh, uh, in the previous one student we discussed about the solenoid we have discussed that what happened when the current will flow from a straight uh, uh, current carrying conductor so uh, we have seen that there is a formation of a concentric circle or a concentric loop will be formed around a straight current carrying conductor right and here uh, uh, we have also seen in the case of a solenoid that when a large amount of a uh, a large amount of a magnetic field will come along with it then uh, uh, when they enter into the solenoid which is what solenoid is what student that is a, a number of a circular loop right a number of a circular loop or a current carrying coil is there which we can say that when they join together so current carrying coil uh, due to which what happened when the current when the electric current passes through that of the coil then uh, uh, they become parallel to each other and as they start moving away from the coil they will form an, a large coil or a large circle around it so basically near when they start entering into the solenoid they are parallel to each other but when we, they go outside then they are what they are far away from the solenoid so a lot of a circular loop will constitute the solenoid student and these solenoid what happen these each of the solenoid will behave like a circular coil or a loop through which the current when pass through it then it will form a lot of a concentric circle which seems to be parallel when it enter into the uh, solenoid and then when it comes out it will form a large arc or a large loop moving on and we will see now that uh, what happen when a force occur uh, on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field students so you see force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field now here there is a we know that when the electric current flows through a conductor it already produces magnetic field and the field so produce exert a force on a magnet placed in the vicinity of the conductor let us see what happened here uh, that suppose we have taken a current carrying conductor and you know that uh, when a current carrying conductor is there it itself uh, produces a uh, magnetic field around it and when we keep this uh, current carrying conductor in a magnetic field the magnetic field will also exert you can see here it is written that the magnet will the magnet <coughs> this magnet also must also exert an equal and opposite force on the current carrying conductor okay so the force uh, which is exerted by that of the current carrying conductor here the magnet will also going to exert a force on that of the current carrying conductor and this was explained by ampere who is was the french scientist so he said that if we will keep a magnet in the uh, in the in the vicinity of a current carrying conductor the magnet will also going to produce a mag uh, exert a force to that of the to the correct current carrying conductor now for that he perform an activity he demonstrated an activity as you can see here in the picture itself you will find student that is that is we have taken a small aluminium rod this is a small aluminium rod which is about 5 cm and there are two connecting wire these two are connected with the wire and because of this it is suspended horizontally easily from the stand this is the stand and these two uh, um, are the wires which have connected this aluminium rod now we have suspended it in, in such a way that it is suspended horizontally now what we will do this is a horseshoe magnet students okay so we will keep the rod in between the two poles of the magnetic field okay this is the magnetic field this magnetic field is generated due to the horseshoe magnet so here you can see place a horseshoe magnet in such a way that the rod lies between the poles with the magnetic field directed upward okay so we have to keep the magnet in such a way that uh, the rod will going to lie between the pole of the magnetic field and for this 
what we have to do we have to keep the north pole of a magnet vertically downward you can see the north pole is vertically downward while that of the south pole at vertically above to that of the aluminium rod now this aluminium rod you can see here this aluminium rod is connected to the this aluminium is rod it is connected uh, to the to the series with a battery this is a battery student so it is connected with the battery a key is there and rheostat is there this rheostat will going to help in giving the variable resistance okay so when the current will be produced then uh, uh, the different resistance produced by the, the rheostat is also added along with the circuit now what happened when we pass a current through the aluminium rod from b to end a so how the current will flow students you know that the current always flow from positive to negative so current is starts flowing from here as you can see in the arrow itself so then the current reaches to b and then it will enter into it reaches to a what do you observe it is observed that the rod displays towards left side and you will notice the rod uh, rod get displaced so here what happened as the current will start flowing from this and reaches to the other end this rod will get displaced towards the left side okay it will goes towards the left side student like this okay it will displace towards the left side now what happened now again we will change the direction we will reverse the current flowing through the rod and then we will try to find out what will be the direction of the displacement so when the current if suppose we will change the battery this will be the positive and this will be the negative so so the current will start flowing from here and when current changes its direction then the rod will also will it will move towards the right side the displacement will be at the right side okay theek okay. hai so why does the question here that why does the rod get displaced i hope you have understood that when the current flows through it the current carrying conductor which is present in the in between to that of the magnetic field it will get displaced and the displacement of the rod it is because the force is exerted on the current carrying aluminium rod when it is placed in a magnetic field so it suggests that the direction of force is also reversed when the direction of the current through the conductor is reversed see here what happened it is said that when the display why the displacement is occurring student it is because a force is exerted on a current carrying aluminium rod the aluminium rod is there which is carrying the current so a force is exerted on it and this force is exerted when the aluminium rod is placed in a magnetic field when it is placed in a magnetic field then we uh, it can be uh, then the force can be exerted the force can be felt here here one more thing is there that if we will change the direction of the force then also the direction of the current changes okay so so you can see here that when the force is changes the direction of the current through the conductor is also reversed now we what we will do when we will change the direction of the field to vertically downward by interchanging the two poles so it is once again observed that the direction of the force acting on the current carrying rod get reversed this shows that the direction of force on the conductor it depends upon the direction of current and the direction of magnetic field here it is explaining students that when we apply the force when the current is uh, um, is there then it will exert a force a force of, is applied on that of the aluminium rod and due to which the change in the direction can be show, uh, seen in the aluminium rod suppose if we will change the direction of the current so when the direction of the current changes then the movement of the aluminium rod also changes the aluminium rod also get change here okay aluminium rod also get change students and if the current uh, which is flowing through it the direction of the current if it changes then the movement of the aluminium rod also changes not only this if suppose we will change the magnetic field also the north to the south the south to the north so changing the magnetic field direction of the magnetic field will also going to shows the deflection in a different direction 
okay so by this we came to conclusion that either we are changing the direction of the force or we are changing the uh, the uh, the direction of uh, direction of the current or the magnetic field they are depend on each other so this shows that that the direction of force on a conductor depend upon the direction of current and the direction of magnetic field okay so force which is acting on the conductor it depend upon the direction of current as well as the direction of magnetic field see here students here we have taken the aluminum raft and kept it in between to that of the magnetic field which was generated by the horseshoe magnet and due to which we can find the deflection as we are we are knowing that uh, when the current flows through any wire then it behaves like a magnet and when you keep a compass magnetic compass near it it will shows the deflection so obviously here also the current carrying conductor will uh, uh, will responsible for the deflection but since a magnetic field is produced already because of the bar magnet due to which the direction can also be affected again the direction will be affected now when we change the direction or when we change the direction of the magnetic field so the direction which is acting on the conductor will also get changed okay so okay so if there is any change uh, in that of the magnetic field if there is any change in the direction of the current to students so obviously the direction of the force also of the conductor also changes now when we had done the experiment we had found here one thing that the displacement of the rod why the displacement of the rod is occurring student it is because of the force which is acting on that of the aluminum rod because of the magnetic field produced there now see here the displacement of the rod it is largest it means its magnitude is highest when the direction of the current is at right angle to whom to the direction of the magnetic field so if this is the magnetic field so this will be the current only then the displacement will be maximum okay so when the the uh, current direction is the right angle to the direction of the magnetic field in that case uh, we will find that the magnitude the value the uh, the displacement of the rod will also be maximum so suppose if here we consider that the direction of the current and that of the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and found that the force is perpendicular to both of them then the three direction can be illustrated with the help of a fleming left hand rule so suppose students here we have taken the magnetic field okay we said that the magnitude of the electric current produced in a current carrying conductor will be maximum uh, the displacement will be maximum when the direction of the current and the direction of the uh, the magnetic field both of them are perpendicular to each other okay now this three direction it will be illustrated if it suppose uh, the magnetic field and that of the current is perpendicular to each other and the motion the displacement which is shown by the rod is also perpendicular to both of them then this direction it can be explained with the help of a simple rule which is called as a fleming's left hand rule what is the fleming left hand rule students students a very very important rule students remember that according to this rule stretch the thumb fourth finger and middle finger of your left hand in such a way that they are mutually perpendicular to each other so we have to stretch you can see here in this picture itself that these three this is the fourth finger this is the middle finger and this is the thumb if all the three are what they are perpendicular to each other then then the first finger it will this is the fourth finger fourth finger or the or field consider it as a four finger this is what this is four finger it is a four finger okay this is what this is the thumb and this is the middle finger so the four finger or the first finger it will uh, shows the uh, the direction of the magnetic field 
and the middle finger it is showing the direction of the uh, of the current so the motion if the field magnetic field is shown by the pole finger and the current is shown by the middle finger then the thumb will going to show the motion or the displacement of the object okay this is what this is the fleming's left hand rule okay so here it is writ written that if the first finger points to the direction of magnetic field and second finger in the direction of the current then the thumb will point in the direction of motion or the force acting on the conductor okay so if the force is acting on it then the thumb will going to represent the displacement it will represent the direction of the motion of a current carrying conductor students there are these days there are lot of a uh, devices are there students which we uh, used on the basis of a current carrying conductor and magnetic field and that will include the electric motor electric motor is there electric generator loudspeaker microphone lot of a uh, measuring instrument is there these all are what these all are the devices that uses the current carrying conductor and the magnetic field so here we will going to use the left hand rule see this left hand rule it was given by flemings and that is why it is also called as fleming left hand rule you can see here that uh, how it is divided see this is what this is the field which is the four finger <coughs> thumb is what it is showing the motion and c for center and c for current so try to understand in such a way that uh, f for field and f for four finger so four finger will going to tell the magnetic field c for current and c for center finger so this is the center finger which help us in telling the current so obviously only the thumb is left so thumb will represent the magnetic force or it will represent the movement the displacement of the object okay Now see here, a question is given that an electron it enters a magnetic field at a right angle to it. So if this is a magnetic field, so electron is entering like this only. Yes, it is already given. Okay, so the electrons enter the magnetic field at right angle to it, and the direction of force acting on the electron will be. So obviously, students see here uh, uh, the. the magnetic force is at this side and the current is acting on this side so obviously the force it it is also perpendicular to uh, both of them uh, both of the two that is the magnetic field as well as the current uh, in which the electron is moving so here the direction of the force acting on the electron will be into the page it will be re remain inside that of the page in into that of the page so all the three will be what these all are the perpendicular to each other so out of the four that is to the left to the right out of the page and into the page the answer will be into the page here it is written that the direction of force is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field and current and this will be given this is given by fleming's left hand rule so fleming's left hand rule it says that if a electro if a, uh, we stretch all our three fingers four finger middle middle and and thumb we will find out uh, that uh, we if any two directions are given we can get the direction of the third one this is what student this is the fleming left hand rule <clears throat> see these days the magnetic field is also used in medicine like magnetic field is uh, basically used to obtain the images of the different body parts you can see here mri mri is what this is the magnetic resonance imaging here what happened with the help of the magnetic field we can see the inside body form on the basis of obtaining image of a different part and this technique is called as a magnetic resonance imaging, uh, imaging or the images which is formed with the help of this is called the mri only it is having a lot of uses in the medicine it basically used to find out if any problem is there so that can be easily find out with the help of mri this is very common student mri now let us move on and see 
a very important topic and that is electric motor electric motor what is a motor student what is an electric motor so see electric motor is what it is a rotating device that converts the electrical energy to mechanical energy remember that what is the what what is the motor is there in your house so basically when you turn on the light this motor will start uh, the water pump if we talk about that consisting of the motor itself so it will start taking out the water from the underground to the tank so here what it is doing with the help of the electricity the current is passing through it and the current reaches to the heated place so here it has done a mechanical energy similarly if we talk about any of the object like washing machine refrigerator mixer grinder mp3 computer electric fans so there also when you supply electricity to it the fan the fan place starts rotating mixer grinder starts rotating washing machine starts moving so basically here this is what it's a kind of the motor is what it's a device that converts the electrical energy to that of the mechanical energy see it is a rotating device that convert electrical energy to the mechanical energy now you can see here an electric motor and the the picture is already given here students many time the construction and the working ask of that of the electric motor so it is really important to understand it now see here what is there in the electric motor an electric motor it is shown in the figure it consisting of a rectangular coil a b c d as you can see here as you can see here see here students that it consisting of a rectangular coil and this rectangular coil is a b c d and these coil they are insulated with the copper wire okay they are insulated with the copper wire and this is placed in between the magnetic field and the magnetic field will be produced by two poles of the magnet one is north pole and the other one is the south pole okay so the coil is placed between the two poles of the magnetic field and the in such a way that the arm ab and cd are perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field now see here the end of the coil when you look at the rectangular coil the end of the coil are connected to two halves p and q of a split ring see this is what this is the split ring i'll show you this is what this p and q is what is the split ring okay so the coil is connected to a ring and it is what it is a split one that's why it is called as a split ring it is a split ring now this is split ring okay now the inner side of these halves are insulated and attached to an axle this is what student this is the rotator this is the axle at which the uh, this uh, split rings are attached with it so axle is there and uh, this the inner side of the half so of or the split rings when you look at it it is what it is insulated insulated connected to that of the axle now the external conducting edges of p q touches two conducting stationary brushes x and y now see here the external conducting edges this is p and q the external one is attached to x and y okay these two are connected or con attached with the two conducting stationary brushes that is x and y now what happened this is what this is the whole structure so and the later on this x y is connected to a battery and a key is there okay so two brushes are also there students which help in holding that of the split rings together now what happened when the current in the coil a b c d enter from the source of battery now this battery will going to produce the current from here so current will enter from the battery from the source of battery to back battery through the conducting brush x and flow back to the battery through brush y now what happened when the current will flow from a b c d from the coil a b c d so it will enter from the battery this is the battery students and this battery uh, will produces the current so through the brush what is the brush here that is x so from the x it will enter into the rectangular coil 
okay it will enter into the rectangular coil and now what you will find that here it will goes from ab and then it will reaches to cd now see here when the current uh, from that of the ab reaches to cd the ab at ab we can apply the fleming's left hand rule here so that time the direction of the current will be at downward direction right so see here the we will find that the force acting on arm ab pushes it downward okay so when the current is flowing in the uh, in the in the uh, right side and the magnetic field is produced so you will find that this ab the direction of force which is acting on it is in the downward direction similarly when the current comes to the cd at that time the direction of the current uh, force will be in the upward direction okay so when the current moves from ab moves downward and cd it moves the upward now what happen afterward here uh, the coil and the axle o which is uh, uh, mounted uh, over that of the brush uh, or, or we can say that because of that only uh, the force acting on the cd it will pushes it upward and ultimately they will rotate into the anti clockwise uh, uh, anti clockwise but what happen at half rotation this q it will make contact with the brush x and brush with a uh, p with brush why so this q uh, this q will going to make a contact with the so when the current will flow uh, when reaches to that of the x here the q will it comes in contact with x and p will comes in contact with the y and due to what happened due to this uh, students as you can see here because of this only the the current it get interchange the current uh, which is was moving in the clockwise it start moving in the anti clockwise direction you can see here it is written that at half rotation at half rotation q will make the coil to get reversed uh, it contact with the brush x and p with brush y and therefore the current of the coil it get reversed and as the current of the coil get reversed it will start moving to the the second one not from a b c d but d c b e in the reverse pattern and this direction of the flow which get reversed through the circuit it will be done with the help of a commutator okay so it is this um, the split ring which act as a commutator and this commutator will help in the reversal of the current as well as when the current get reversed the direction of the current get re reversed then the direction of the force which is acting on the two arms that is ab and cd will also get reversed and now the arm ab which was pushing earlier it was pushing is downward now it will going to push it in upward direction while cd which was previously pushing it in the upward now pushing it at downward so we can say that the coil and the axle rotate half a turn more in the same direction and then it get reversed and the reversing of the current is repeated it is repeated at each half of the rotation giving to a continuous rotation of the coil to the axle so you can see here at first half when ab which was uh, exerting a current on uh, through which the current is flowing it will going to apply a force on the uh, wire in the downward direction while in case of a cd it will be in the upward direction but when the exchange of the axle occur when the exchange of the brushes occur here so the the current the movement of the current also get changes this time the current will start moving from c d c b a and ultimately the magnet the the direction of the force will also get reversed earlier the direction of the force of the av which was occurring in the downward direction it will become in the upward direction while the other one will get into the downward direction and due to this half movement only this will rise a continuous rotation of the coil and an axle okay because of this movement only the direction of the current can be easily changed okay now the motor is this there are lot of a commercial uses of the motor students you can see that an electromagnet in placed in permanent magnet large number of see the what is the commercial motor use it is used used as an electromagnet in place of a permanent magnet 
in place of electromagnet is having a lot of a strength students so we prefer to use electromagnet a large number of a turns will also help or will also make in a more conducting wire in a current carrying coil as well as the soft iron core on which the coil is wound uh, that is also a uh, with the help of the motor itself we can do it okay so this is how the electric motor work as the movement occur the axle and that of the split ring it is because of the split ring split ring is what this is the commutator and this commutator will help in uh, changing the direction of the current and when the direction of the current changes uh, due to which the movement the magnetic field produced will also get changes the students okay so i hope you have understood that of the motor